seen a lot of storage spills. We've seen a lot of fish dying off. Reg oor ons land, van die Valrivier tot by Hartebeespoor Dam in Gauteng en die Bloemhofdam in die noordwestelike provincie, van die Gariep en Spitskopdamme in die Vrystaat tot by Darlington in die Oostkaap. Ooral oor is wetenskapelikes erg bekommerd. I think we really are in real trouble. Hulle beskryf ons waterbronne as uiters besoedel en onveilig, dalk selfs doodelik. At high enough concentrations, a once-off dose would be certainly able to kill you. There is very little doubt that it is in our drinking water. Oor die afgelope dekade is Suid-Afrika's waterstelsels dier een ongewone stel oe gecontroleer. As you can see there, it's very clear for the majority of the reservoir and is mostly not a concern. Satellite het foto's vanuit die ruimte geneem, wat nou dier navorsers gebruik word om een prentjie te vorm van hoe gezond of ongezond ons binnenlandse water is. The idea was to find out what is the water quality from an independent data source like satellites. Dr. Mark Matthews, a wetenskapelike in aardwaarneming, het as deel van sy PHD ter middel van die jongste afstandswaarnemingstechnieke een studie gedoen van 50 van Suid-Afrikaanse waterlichame. And you can see the conditions changing um, from scene to scene and this is really the power of satellite remote sensing. Die goed geaarde wetenskapelike begeleid hierdie eerste studie van sy soort vanuit sy motorhuis. Hy word gesamentlik dier die Departement van Wetenskap en Technologie en die Wetenskapelike en Nijverheids Navorsingsraad of WNNR bevonds. Using the archive of satellite data, there's an amazing environmental record of the changes and the status of South Africa's water quality like we've never seen before. Terwijl maak veranderinge dier middel van ruimtesatellite naspoor, is die tekens dat die waterkwaliteit op een afdraande pad is, vir die wat al levenslang langs die valrivier bly, al te duidelik. We used to run a pleasure cruiser and, you know, it's a funny little story, but if we had run out of any of the drink, I used to just dip into the Val River and use that as our mix. For, for any drink, even if you cut that, I don't mind. But um, th- that's, that's exactly, we used to drink the water. But there was not a problem, but today, never ever. Bruce and Petra Stewart is huisagente, wat hulle amper 35 jaar gelede in die Vaaldog omgeven, ongeveer 100 kilometer buiten Johannesburg, gevestig het. We've been totally blessed to have brought up our four children on the water. We obviously use it for recreational purposes. A lot of the kids are in the water every single weekend. You really have to start looking at studying the water and actually see what it's going to do to us. Soos die steward het Malcolm Plant en sy gesin langs die rivier nes geskop. Hy is bekommerd oor wat hy elke dag hier sien. Toxic water running around the foam, green algae. Um, December to now it's actually gone down by about 40-50% the algae colour on the top of the water. So it was worse than this? Oh no, perfect. And this looks pretty bad. This is basically on a daily basis what you'll see here. Volgens Malcolm het die December hitte tot omgevings chaos aanleiding gegeen. The water went actually grass green and we had a huge fish kill. And you got to the department to come out and, and have a look? They came out, they brought out the relevant people, came and did water tests and actually took the photographs. Die Departement van Water en Sanitatie se onderzoek het bevind dat die visvrektes een gevolg is van die skielike hittegolf, wat tot temperatuurverandering en een afname in suurstof geleid het. Die verslag het bijgevoeg dat natuurlijke oorzake die grootste enkele bijdra tot die visvrektes lever. They say it's not the surge that's coming through here, but we all know that lack of oxygen, green algae, the water is, is contaminated. What have been the, let's call it, pollution highlights? You mentioned uh, a lot of dead fish over December. Oh, that was minor. We've had uh, a situation where there weren't hundreds of fish that died. There were literally thousands and thousands of fish. And then we've also had the blue-green algae. Actually it looks like raw sewage. And it gets purple and green and, and blue and it floats. Yeah, it's terrible. And you can't, you can't live with that smell. It is horrific. Absolutely terrible. Volgens kenners is die kern van die probleem van besoedeling wat ons damme en riviere beinvloed, riool. We produce about 5,000 megaliters every single day of sewage in the country. 
Of that, about 20% is treated to reasonable standards, safe for discharge, which leaves the rest, that's 4 billion litres a day of untreated or partially treated sewage going into our rivers and dams. Onafhankelijke ontleder, Professor Anthony Turton, verduidelik dat die oorvloed van die riool in ons water meer voedingsstoffe beteken, en dat dit, wanneer dit met hoge temperatuure gepaard gaan, die perfecte broeiplek vir blauw-groen alge of cyanobacterie is. The higher your level of nutrients, the greater becomes your probability of production of algae. Dit is juist wat Dr. Mark Matthews vanuit sy motorhuis in Kaapstad, wat in een navorsingscentrum omskep is, in baie van ons waterlichame bestudeer. They're very significant seasonal changes. So cyanobacteria tend to dominate during the summer and autumn months. Um, and then during winter, the reservoir generally clears significantly. Die WNNR studie het vastgesteld dat tot 62% van Zuid-Afrikaanse water lichaam hypertrofies is. Met ander woorde, dat het buitengewoon verrijk is met plantvoedingsstoffe en dit die ideale broeiplek maak vir blauwgroen alge of cyanobacteria. Navorsers het ook blauwgroen alge bloeisels in elk van die 50 waterlichame wat in die studie ingesluit is opgespoor. Cyanobacteria are bacteria that behave like plants. So they photosynthesize like algae or like plants, but they're actually bacteria. Why they are such a problem is that they occur at very high concentrations and they float on the water surface. And the most sinister thing about them is that they produce very potent toxins. Um, some of the literature says they're as potent as cobra venom. Nou, die gipstobbe wat in blauwgroen algie voorkom, word in een hele reeks siektes en ongesteldhede wat mense affecteer gekoppel, soos bijvoorbeeld leverdysfunksie, neurologische probleme, vaalsiektes en moendlik kanker. Well, these cyanobacteria generally produce a family of toxins called, called cyanotoxin. The one group is a neurotoxin and there's a whole family of these neurotoxins and what they do is they attack the central nervous system in various ways and they manifest in different forms from dementia to basic, basically loss of memory or, or, or loss of cognitive ability etc. And then there's another group and these tend to attack the liver. So these are hepatotoxins and the hepatotoxins now uh, cause a, a breakdown of the liver function over time and the liver has got some ability to regenerate itself but ultimately you become debilitated if your liver is constantly attacked over a period of time. Die waterlichaam wat by verre die swakste in die WNNR studie gevaar het, was Hartebeespoordam. Yeah, I think Hartebeespoord stands out as a bit of a freak. It's almost like a chemical reactor. We have extremely high levels of nutrients coming in and that's driving intense cyanobacteria blooms in this reservoir. If you go out and you see the bright green scum on the water, which you will see, just stay away from it. I wouldn't advise any activity during that period. But what we have been seeing is this in response to the remediation efforts on that dam, the water has been staying clearer for longer. So in the winter, it is better, but in the summer, is it gifted. Volgens the Department of Water and Sanitation, it is the in the WNNR study problems where they have been working for years. Although the report has clearly shown trends in terms of the difference between how the algal blooms have at different rates happened in different parts of the countries. It hasn't shown how the trends have actually been happening as a result of the department's interventions. As a result of our interventions, the contaminants have actually decreased in time between 2008 and 2012. And also, secondly, so it's not only the blue-green algae which is a problem. The other problem is debris and the litter. And to date, we have removed 2,500 tons of litter from the dam. Afgezien van die probleem van Phyllis, was die opdracht van die WNNR project om eutrofisering in die aanwezigheid van blauw-groen alge bloeisels binnen die bestek van de dekade na te vors. Ander waterlichame wat in Maakse navorsing uitgelig is, het gemiddelde tot hoge vlakke cyanobacterie in die somer insluitende die gariep, bloemhof, spitskop en faaldamme, wat maar enkele voorbeelde is. Een organisatie met die naam Syf beijver hulle daartoe om die faalomgeving te red en al het staan van niks terug neem. Volgens Syfse voorzitter Malcolm Plant het die organisatie al verskye kere die plaaslike municipaliteit hof toegeneem as gevolg van hulle onvermoe om die water skoon te hou. 
over the years we've had six orders that we've taken against them, compelling them to keep the water and their discharges clear. Save had the plaatselijke regering van the rivier besoedeling aangetla, but of van the gebarste rioolpipe of the van functionering van water suiverings aanlegte afkom. And this runs down this concrete channel directly into the red spray, which ends up in the main system. Bruce, a besorgde burger, gaan gereeld die uitvloeisel wat vanuit die rietspruit watersuiverings aanleg in die valrivier stelsel ingepomp word na. Okay, so to be clear, this is waste product coming from the, the water plant and going directly into the river system. Absolutely, yes. So one of several outlets? Yes, it is. It's one of several that I know of. Dit is standaard praktijk vir die afloop van watersuiveringspersele om in riviere losgelaat te word. Maar die uitvloeisel behoort gereeld gecontroleerd te word en aan sekere standaarde te voldoen. This is a waste water treatment works we're talking about, but it's part of the treatment works that is serving the, the, the southern part of, Hout, of the Johannesburg area. But unfortunately, it is not operating optimally as it's supposed to be. Leonardo Manus is the departementse hoofdirecteur van infrastructuur, bedrijf en instandhouding. Hy was tesame met spesialis wetenskaplike Dr. Chris Moseki eerlik in die aanspreek van 'n paar moeilike vrae. Are the wastewater treatment plants up to standard? Yeah, I think you need to put it in three categories. Those who are dysfunctional, those who are working beyond its treatment capacity, and those who are actually quite working quite well. In 2014 het die departement 'n sogenaamde Green Drop Progress verslag uitgereik waar die risiko van beide afvalwater suiveringsaanlegte en die algemene bestuur daarvan insluitende die insameling van invloei identificeer. Wat verontrustend is, is dat die verslag die meerderheid van die aanlegte 259 van hulle as hoë risiko aangeteken het, met 212 aanlegte wat as kritis bestempel is. We just look here at the provincial performance, Eastern Cape, uh, Free State, Gauteng Province, the colours are all red, clearly indicating a crisis, a disaster. Yes, in, in that regard, we have to admit that there are things that are not going as, a, as it's supposed to be. Risk ratings are increasing since the inception of the Green Drop Certification Programme. But it's not that we are only monitoring and not acting. More than four billion have been spent um, through municipal grants to actually look at the upgrade of waste to retreat from works. And that excludes the work that the department is now currently doing. Volgens Malcolm Plant van Save is the department met een reeks ingewikkelde uitdagings geconfronteerd. Yes, we are quite happy with we've, what we've achieved with the department direct, that they are getting into the repairs and starting to get something happening, which will obviously in the short term relieve the surge problems coming into the rivers. And then from there on, it'll have to do the capacity increases, which will then really clear up the whole issue that we're sitting with. Hulle beloof lang termijn planne. Maar 'n drukkende, moontlik onheilspellende kort termijn vraag is: is cyanobacterie dalk besig om na ons drinkwater deur te suiver? There is uh, very little doubt that it is in our drinking water. As to how much it is, that is an open question. Within the the close scientific community working on this, there's absolutely consensus, but this is just at an oral level. This is not published papers, okay? There's an oral consensus. Dit is nie 'n consensus wat dier die departement van water en sanitasie onderskryf word nie. Volgens hulle is die suiveringsaanlegte oor die algemeen op die onttrekking van cyanobacterie en die gepaardgaande gifstoffe vanuit ons drinkwater gerig. In areas where resource is prone to algal blooms, one of those treatments would be to actually um, put it through activated carbon to actually ensure that you actually remove all the, the toxins, which means the water will then be safe for human consumption. I think that the vast majority of our water treatment facilities do in fact take care of this problem. But there can be times when these cyanotoxins reach very high concentration levels, for example during summer months, and at that time we would have to take special precautions and, and special treatment in order to remove these toxins. And it's very probable that there are certainly at times trace levels of toxins in our water supply. Okay, so can we say with certainty then that cyanobacteria are not present in our drinking water? 
If your compliance is 99% or more compliant with SANS 241, then one can with certainty say that that water treatment works is working according to its design, is working according to the expected levels of efficacy, and it will not be there. However, there might be areas, and the lesser areas for that matter might be, where those levels of compliance might not be achieved, and then there are, would be some likelihood that um, the presence of could be, could be, uh, could be there. Are we being alarmist? I don't think so, because uh, there are events which have certainly a very high health risk, uh, but certainly for the majority of the time, there's no risk generally from cyanotoxins. I think responsible science needs to be just that. If you're a scientist and you know something, or even suspect something that has not yet been proven, and you suggest that, there's, that some work needs to be done here, I think that's being responsible. So I don't think we're being alarmist at all.